All right, welcome to the week three wrap up of this week's plants. Uh, we'll start with wisteria. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have the blooms. You can look all over the ground here and there's little purple pea-shaped flowers. Um, that's because it's growing all the way up into that tree up there. Wisteria is not native, but it's absolutely gorgeous as a vine, like covering trellises. Uh, definitely Google it, see how impressive it can look. Sorry I don't have the flowers, um, but this is a good uh, kind of warning sign. Uh, they say with the wisteria, you spend the first seven years growing it, trying to get it established, and the next seven years trying to get rid of it. Uh, we moved in 15 years ago, and I'm still trying to get rid of some of the wisteria. Um, it's a little bit invasive and tough to get rid of, so be careful where you plant it and be sure to stay ahead of it. Um, here's another one that's not yet blooming, Spirea. Uh, this is a different species than I had you look at, uh, but there are all sorts of gorgeous Spireas, native and non-native. So Google that as well and uh, notice how beautiful it can be at this time of year. All right. Here's one of your weekly plants, iris. Absolutely gorgeous plant. Uh, probably a place for it in just about every garden. It spreads on its own. Every three years or so, you can kind of dig it up and divide it, and your patch keeps growing. Two major types are bearded iris and Dutch iris. These are called bearded iris because they've got this little beard on one of their teeples on there, kind of cool. Um, really interesting structure of the flower. Irises come in thousands of different colors and types. Um, there is an iris society in Tulsa. If you get way into it, join them. I'm sure they would be happy to have some youth uh, showing up at the garden center uh, to kind of trade irises and talk about different iris experiences. All right, over here is your phlox. You've got kind of a pink phlox right here. Great rock garden plant. You can see it kind of growing tucked into the rocks here. There's also kind of a bluer phlox over there. Um, also, I think called rock moss or something like that. Um, forgotten the common name. Um, great plant, and at this time of the year, just puts on a great show. It's tough, it can take a drought. Um, if you plant it in mass, um, it really is a spectacular floral display and I think I put a link in your canvas to an entire festival in Japan uh, around the blooming of the um, of the flocks there. Here's your third plant of the week, daisy fleabane or ridgeron, a common weed in uh, lawns in the sunflower family. Um, I find it pretty. Um, I let mine go uh, to seed each year so they kind of keep spreading. Also, I think that I forgot to talk about bluets last week. These little tiny weeds with four kind of cross-shaped petals are bluets in the coffee family, the genus Houstonia. Um, beautiful little weeds popping up in lawns. We have two species back here, the little white one and the bigger purple one. And you can see both growing right next to each other right here. Bluets or Quaker ladies. How's that for a common name? All right, behind us here we have one of our apple trees, another one of your plants of the week. Um, beautiful tree, beautiful shape, beautiful flowers, beautiful fruit. It's a winner for Oklahoma. I don't have the same pest issues as I have with some of my stone fruits uh, and we get a good crop each year. I'd really like you guys and encourage you to go to the Botany of Desire documentary. It's free. You can just Google it or if you have Amazon Prime, I think it's on there as well. They do an apple segment on there, which is really, really cool. Um, so I encourage you to do that. Uh, I know you guys are also kind of missing all aspects of school right now, probably. Uh, even the gossipy stuff. So I think I'll probably give you an update on who's dating who right now. The red-bellied woodpeckers are still together. They went out for a nice meal this week. The male pileated asked his girlfriend if she wanted to go out to the stump this week. She accepted and they hung out together on the old log. 
and the squirrels are still together. Although it's getting kind of cramped, they're stuck in the house, and everyone feels like they're living on top of one another. Sound familiar? All right, your last couple plants for this week, greenbrier or catbrier. Um, it's a vine native in Oklahoma and present just about everywhere. And it can be nasty with the spines. A couple different or prickles on it. You can see it on that guy right there. And these get into big tangles or briar patches in Oklahoma. If you spend any time hiking around out here, you're gonna get scratched up by cat briar or green briar. A couple different, you can see the other type of prickles over here. Uh, the root or rhizome of this actually is, uh, it's edible and is the flavoring for sarsaparilla, kind of that root beer thing that they used to make. Here's the leaf of it and the flowers. Let me see if I can, here it is just about to flower. Right here you get these umbels of uh, flowers hanging down off the vine. And the last plant is gonna be also in the coffee family just like bluets, this is called bed straw. Um, it's got whorled leaves, square stems, and those stems are covered with hair. So it gets stuck to just about anything it touches. Um, commonly used as a medicinal called bed straw because they used to fill mattresses with it back in the day. So fun plant, you'll be able to find that in your backyard, very common weed in the coffee family. Don't try to make coffee out of it. It will not be successful. All right, have a fantastic weekend. I miss you guys. All right, surprise field trip. We are at the school gardens. I figured you guys might want to see how things are coming along. And since this is involved with food production, I'm going to call it essential. Um, I need to get some water on it anyways. We'll set up the automated watering system in a minute. But hour one, here's your bed. Your, your kohlrabi's looking good. I threw a couple nasturtiums in there and your lettuce down at the other end is looking good as well. Alright, hour number three. Your bed's looking good. Look at how gorgeous that lettuce is looking. It's going to be a success and it looks like we got kale. And frankly, I don't know how to tell the difference between kale, cauliflower, broccoli, and kohlrabi when they're this size. Um, I think next year we'll label them a little bit better. All right, hour number four, your dandelion are doing well. Your kale that you planted in the fall is starting to bloom, which means it's bolting, which means we got to get that harvested and et soon. Um, again, this is some of your fall kale, um, purple kale, and we've got an onion there. Your carrots are looking super good. Hour number five. Your dandelion are looking good. I never tried a dandelion. I think I will taste one. That's surprisingly good. It's not bitter like I was expecting it to be. Your red kale is coming in. Hour six. Your dandelion is looking fantastic, and it looks like you got kale and Swiss chard down here, which is coming in. We'll get some water on it, and with it warming up, I think that's going to start growing quick. Here's our herbs. Your sage is looking fantastic. Your chives. Your thyme. Your chives. The rosemary, looking good. Your chives, your oregano as well, looking fantastic. This is our pollinator garden with our echinacea, our coneflower coming back up. And we've got our mint coming in very well. We've got the tarragon. And our lemon balm coming in well. We've got uh, 
Sorrel? No. Uh, not Sorrel. Uh, Burnett. Um, looking very healthy. And then our parsley that we planted in the fall coming in well as well. Come over here, I'll give you a quick look. I think it was hour five that it decided they were going to do a restore the native prairie. This is where that's happening. We put a pound of seed out uh, about three weeks ago. Um, I see a lot of stuff coming in here. A lot of pollinator plants we put in there, so it'll be really interesting to see how this area develops over the course of the next uh, summer. And by fall, it should be looking pretty good. There's the garden update. Stay safe.